Making a life worth living and a retirement worth having is about having people in our lives that we know, like, and trust. It's something we talk about regularly in the professional realm. It's literally what we want in life, is people who are going to promote our life. You see, in life, we have to make a living, and we have to be employed somewhere. Whether we choose retail for life, or whether we choose to go there for a short term, or whether we get employed in a blue-collar, white-collar situation where we get a salary, that is our lawful right to choose as long as our skill sets are there. But when we start to time out of technology, when we start to lose our abilities to do things and perform as well, we literally have an impact on our own life. We openly make a difference in other people's lives when we give them a chance, when we promote them to something better than maybe they're ready for so that they can rise to the occasion. You see, in life, we have moments of time to make all the difference for people. In my language school, I helped young people and older people to learn the Japanese language in a way that made sense to their minds. It was a proprietary program that I wrote, literally from my own life experience of living in Japan and learning how to speak the language from a dictionary. I literally did study Japanese language in Indian University, but the programming did not work for me. I could memorize vocabulary, but I couldn't get the sentence structure. I couldn't figure out how things worked. And then all of a sudden it just started to click for me. I just started to make sense of how to make the pattern work for people. And I taught that pattern a long time. I made flashcards for people. I made graphic artist oriented type of imagery and color coded pages and created a system that people could utilize with a color coding pen system and other aspects that came from my own creative mind. There is possibility that someone decided to get onto my lawfully owned hard drives that holds that entire program and delete the entire thing. I want you to really think about that for a moment of what that might feel like for an originator of a crafted word. That someone who is in intellectual property management, like myself, who always is creating interesting ideas and always is producing new thought and is always making observation as a journalist trained from a university that is well known for that degree, I am always protect professing to know something, but I don't profess to be an expert in anything. I'm not an expert in the Japanese language. I know how to teach it masterfully. I've taught many people of different ages and generations and literally ethnic backgrounds the language. I've had foreigners in my program who are here with legitimate visas. I've had children. I've had families of three I've and four children in the same household in my program. I've had elderly people who just wanted to learn for the heck of it. I've had travelers who were going for business or personal reasons. I've had businessmen who wanted to become business speakers, but that takes a little bit more time than most people realize. It does take a while to first get the basics of the human social structure and then the social nuances of building a relationship. And then it takes a while to master the business language that one needs to actually conduct business. It's quite a long time, actually. It takes a long time to learn the different postures that one has to have and the different types of language from polite to super polite to informal and to know which one to use based on who you're talking to. That is a part of that language and culture. Now in life we have moments of time to make a difference for someone and sometimes efficiency is the best policy. When I teach a program I try and do it in the most efficient little way possible. When I teach a language I try and say look this is the common structure that you can utilize and once you master the language and build up some vocabulary you can really have a conversation. <clears throat> My teen students actually became the most proficient because they could take it all in. They could get the structure, they handled the organization, and they totally got how to learn other languages as a result of my programming. I even had one student who went on to learn Chinese, German, and I think Latin as well. He told me point blank, he said, once I learned how to study from your program, it made all the other languages studying so much easier. That was a real compliment to me, even though he was a teenager. He was an intelligent young man. And I really valued his feedback on that. It made me feel good. Now, practically, I've had other people tell me I did a good job. I've had other people value my program to invest in my life by paying me a salary. And I set up a good structure for my life. I literally worked four days a week for half time and made a living that cared for three people in my life. I think that's a pretty good way to live. It's not a super success. It's not a failure either. 
But we all have moments of time in our life when we feel like a failure, when we feel like we didn't quite produce enough, when we know that the writing is a little bit on the wall, that we've got to find a different way of living, and we have to produce for self a new lifestyle, a new way of getting income. I know a wonderful woman who glows the, the love of, of Jesus Christ through her, literally. She's a glower. She just glows. She walks in a room, the whole place lights up. She has that glow of the Lord about her. But she was doing a business for her life for 14 years, and she was getting tired of it. She was getting tired of the people. She was getting tired of the work. She was getting tired of the aspects. So she went back to work in a company. It took her a little while to find a position, but I encouraged her to highlight her skill sets. I helped her look over her resume. I can't say I did a super job with her, but I encouraged her to go and talk to people she once worked with. And once she did that, she started to get the connection. She got a door open, and that led to another door and another door. And that's how life is, that people of our life open doors for us. They can also slam doors shut for us if they're illegally and immorally attacking our lives, and that's a real problem. You see, we have a society that says who has it all gains it all, or something to that effect. And that's not really fair to people. You see, America is supposed to be the land of opportunity, the land where people, if they come here legally, can have the opportunity to not only marry our people, but to create families in our communities and in our, our situations that really need to go further in life. You see, when we build a wealth of income, we are putting aside money usually for our retirement. And if we don't have a retirement from, from, fund from our employer, we have to recognize that that retirement fund might not actually be enough for us to retire on. There's been some fascinating articles recently in some good public quality publications that talk about how much $500,000 in the bank will get for us in retirement. The average seems to be, according to that particular publication, in a variety of states, and roughly 50 they've covered, is that it will cover between 8 and 12 years of life. Now, if you retire at age 60, that means it'll cover you into possibly your 70s if you live in the state where the best cost of living is. The problem is you might live until your 80s, and then what do you do? So if you had a million dollars, you might last until your 80s. But what if you live into your 90s? How are you going to handle retirement then? You see, when I'm talking about making a life worth living, I'm saying do the best you can, become all you can be, and literally find your souls cold in a way that allows you to soar and help to highlight other people in that service industry or that product industry. When I'm talking about making a little retirement worth having, I literally mean in retirement, you're going to want to travel. You're going to want to have a camper. You're going to want to have a car that works. You're going to literally want to have a modest house that doesn't have all this stuff in it. You're going to want to downsize earlier than later. You're going to want to do things while you're still spry. And when you're in old age, you're going to want to be living with someone, loving someone, and married to someone who will literally wipe your nose, wipe your ass if you have to, and take help you take care of your medications if you're the one whose mind stays with it and their little mind doesn't. You see, in life, we have moments of time to make love to people's souls. And I don't mean that in an illicit, immoral, illegal way. I just mean that when we're helping someone in their life, when we're caring for their soul, when they're tending their needs, we are really focused on what they want in life, not what we think is appropriate for them, not what we think is our lawful right to do to them, because we don't have a lawful right to do anything to any human being here in this earth. Once a man or woman reaches adulthood, they are totally in charge of their life. I have a sibling who keeps saying, you're totally in charge. Yes, but I have siblings who attacked my life, who destroyed my rights to records and to credit and other little aspects, and then they expect me to run out and get a literal job. And I'm like, exactly how am I supposed to do that when you've made my name legally shit in this world? So I pretend and profess and continue to go on in my business life. I'm looking for job opportunities, but I'm not calling as many people because I don't have the technology to reach them. You see, technology is pay to play, and if you don't have money for a telephone, it makes it hard to make phone calls. If you utilize a Google Voice situation, you may or may not get through. You also may or may not get your messages because it's a free service. And you may or may not get able to text people based on the fact that the technology gifted to you is free. There doesn't seem to be a way to keep money on file. I have money on file in my other Google account to for calling Japan. But someone decided to lock me out of that phone system. So I don't have the rights to important information that I needed to download. And now I've lost the email because I couldn't pay for that technology that's related to that voicemail. 
So how do I open that up if Google won't talk to me on the telephone, where I can prove it's me, prove that's my technological tool, and get the passcode changed so I can open and get to my voice message, which might be from potential employers? You see, the slippery slope of technology is if we're overly technologized and that there's no human beings in the pot, that no one is local to protect the rights of the people who open those accounts, that any monster can go in and start monkeying with those things. I think I've mentioned that I've got a storage guy, and I'm pretty sure it's the storage guy, who literally has gotten into my storage unit, opened up my files that holds my passcodes to my social media, and started to put his picture with his girlfriend, literally, on my social media profile as Blake Ensign. Now, under federal law, that's illegal. Underneath God's law, it's certainly immoral and illicit. But openly, who's to stop him? I mean, I have double locks on my storage unit, and yet things are being pilfered. I set up an organization in there. I tried to put my table in a way that it wouldn't get damaged any further, and now it's back thrown up on top of something. I can't lift the table up like that. I'm not strong enough. It took a lot to, for me to get it down without breaking my back or breaking something of my fingers or hands to do it. But somebody's monkeying around in my lawful storage unit. I can't get my mother to legally prove that it's been paid, so for all I know, I could have lost all my property because someone just decided to not accept my payment through that opportunity. Now, when I talk like this, I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about the fact that people enter literally other people's homes, steal their property, take their shirts, ruin their photographs, and just think it's a gay old time to interfere in someone's life. My sister has some monsters that live in her neighborhood, but where are the police in those moments? Usually sitting in a parking lot someplace in Noblesville, doing absolutely nothing, picking their nose, I don't know, jerking off. It's hard to say, but if I talk like a real man, if I say this is what I feel, that they should literally be in plain clothes, driving through the neighborhood, riding a bicycle, paying attention to who's home, who's not home, learning what people's schedules are, and trying to figure out who's soliciting and who's ruining things, then maybe we'd have a lot less crime. But openly, that's just an observation of a reporter who says, well, the reason, the way you find out about what's going on in places is you literally go in and start talking to people as a normal human being. You listen, you li let them complain, you let them do their thing, and then you find out who's really good and who's really not. There's a lot of employees in retail that hate their jobs, and they let the customers know it. And I don't know if they think that's a way to get a new job. It's certainly not in my book. But I was there once. I understood what that felt like. I probably said a few things like that when my life wasn't going very well. But that didn't mean I didn't value my job and didn't value my paycheck. It just meant that I took a moment in time to create a relationship with someone who was asking me how I was really doing. And that happens in life, that strangers do literally become friends and sometimes business associates and sometimes bosses and sometimes provider of other opportunities. Now in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for people. Making a difference for a person is really saying, what does this person really have in his life and what are they really looking for to achieve? And am I impeding that opportunity for them to become all that the Lord has called them to be in life? You see, that's where the problem runs, is that when there are people, men and women, who think they know what the Lord has called someone to be, they might be so wrong that they could end up in hell. Now, as a pastoral type, as a minister of sorts, as someone who's read the Bible and has literally studied a lot of works by saints and other people in the Catholic faith and metaphysical communities and Aleister Crowley and all these kind of unique aspects of looking at religion and the Holy Spirit, I have to tell you, there is a hell. There literally is, I believe, a hell that separates you from the Lord because you thought you had the right to lord over someone's life and ruin their life. A ruined life is a life unlived. A ruined life is an unproductive life. A ruined life is a demonstrized life. A ruined life is a destroyed life. A ruined life has taken away the Lord's plan for a human's life. Sometimes people ruin their own lives, sure. But most of the time, if they're productive members of society, they're serving their communities, they're holding good positions, they're helping people to learn things and do things, and that produces a good life. Now, in my lifetime, there are plenty of people who might say I don't have a good life. There are plenty of people in my own family who think that I have lied about my life. But I haven't. I simply have not provided every human being in my family or every human being in society information about my life and how I got to be the man that I am today. That is my lawful right to protect my privacy and my life story. 
I'm not required by any law anywhere to tell people how I became me. And I certainly don't have any great expectation to learn how someone else became them unless they choose to tell me their life story. My life story is starting to be put online. I'm doing this for several reasons. One, to protect my life. Two, to make sure that there's a lineage for my own son who is living abroad with his foreign family to read if something happens to me, to know who his little dad has been for 20 years of his life. But openly, that's my right to do. And when a man leaves this earth, he has a life insurance policy. And I have chosen the person, out of love, of who I'm going to leave that money to. If someone has stolen a copy of that policy, that was illegal. Under federal law, it is illegal to monkey, manhandle, and interfere with someone's federally rightful uh, life insurance policies. It's also illegal to get into their medical records. It's illegal to make photocopies of those things. It's illegal to talk about those things, especially if you have not been presented by any right of any kind that information. Now, when I talk like this, I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about real things. I'm talking about the realities of living in America and in this community of Hamilton County, in particular, for those who are listening close to home here. But when we have people who violate rights of others, we lose the value of America. We become more like those third world countries where there's a dictator in the land or in the local community or in some person's mind. That they literally have the right to monkey around in someone else's life. That they barely know and probably don't know at all in their soul, in their hearts, in their minds, and what God puts on their lives to do. You see, in life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for people, and it's about time for people to start thinking about that a little more. That only when we start to put ourselves behind others will we gain what other people need to know in life about us as a person, as a human being, as someone representing what we believe in, or the God in heaven that we say we follow. Now, making moments of time is what I'm encouraging you to do. Moments of time can last forever. Moments of time can help with closure. Moments of time put people in their place, but moments of time offer opportunities to love, honor, and cherish the people of the world in which we love, honor, and cherish at times in our life. Thanks for listening. This is Blake Kenson of Blaze Communications at LC saying, look at your life, find the people you love, tell them you love them, create peace in the relationships, and go on to happy, retired lives, with them in tow, socially and otherwise. Thanks for listening.